Can you create a mixed reality game with just assets from the Unity Asset Store? And how easy would it be to integrate all of these Unity assets as well as making them work together? Well, today I would like to go over how I use six different Unity assets to basically create a very small archery mixed reality game and we'll break down the creation process from the ground up. Let's start with Hurricane VR Physics Interactions Toolkit which allow me to create very impressive and realistic physical interactions with literally zero code but it is fully extendable and well documented and that code honestly is very well written and easy to understand. Next up we have Odin Inspector and serializer and this is a massive asset which I've been recommending year over year. In this specific case I use it quite a bit during development. For instance there were many methods that I implemented such as a spanning of arrows which I didn't want to honestly create UI for so instead I added a few Odin attributes which give the basically the inspector in Unity superpowers. Now to give my game a cool look I added another Unity asset called Mesh Effects. And when I integrated it into my Unity URP project, I got a bunch of errors, even after material conversions to URP, but then soon I realized that their Unity asset provides URP and HDRP patches that fix all of these issues. For the UI in this game, I kept it fairly simple, but cool looking by using Kenny's beautiful UI pack called the Space Expansion. I also wanted to create a UI transition for the score and also the timer that was easily tweakable without having to use something custom or the animation system in Unity. So to accomplish this, I used DoTwin Pro and personally I have used a free version, which is amazing, but you do need to be a developer to use it. Next, most games or apps need some type of data persistence, which I could have implemented myself and have done many times in the past, but since many people have recommended Easy Safe, then it was time for me to test it out. I like that they provide an auto save solution where you basically can easily tag which objects you like to save and load or if you want to do it yourself through code you can also do that as well and lastly I love adding music and sound to my videos and prototypes but having to find the right soundtrack can honestly take quite a bit of time and in most cases you can find enough variety to fit your experience well I found pro sound collection which I use for the background music the bow the arrow and impact sounds in the mixed reality game also use the sound collection. In addition to Unity assets, I also use Air Foundation, also the OpenXR plugin, the OpenXR plugin for Meta specifically, which allowed me to work with mixed reality in Unity, as well as easily add scene understanding to my experience. This demo here shows you how I can identify and visualize where the walls and ceilings are, also tables and other objects that are in my physical environment, as well as getting additional information about each plane, I also got inspiration from the Meta's building block Find Spawn Position script, which allows you to basically span objects within a certain location. So I built something very similar called Find Wall for Target, which is more specific, but it simply looks for planes that have a plane classifier of walls and also that are vertically aligned. It also checks that the size of each plane is wide enough to basically fit my archery target. All right guys, so next we're going to be creating our new mixed reality project in Unity. Let's go ahead and switch it to Android. Also rename the scene to be game and also remove the volume. We're also going to be installing the Unity OpenXR meta package, enabling the plugin providers, and then making sure that all of our project validations are clean and you apply all the different fixes. Also look at the OpenXR features and make sure that it matches what I have here and then add the Oculus Touch controller profile so that we can use the controllers. We're also going to be converting our camera to an XR rig, removing the offset and then adding the AR camera manager so that we have pass through. And lastly, just update the background type to be solid color, black and alpha equal to zero. All right guys, so now let's go ahead and deploy this to my Meta device. And then once it's deployed, you're gonna see what I see right here. It's going to launch the experience. We can see the sphere and this means that everything is working. So now let's go ahead and set something up in here with Hurricane VR. We're gonna go into the package manager, search for Hurricane VR, and then you can go ahead and just download it and install it. Once we get it installed, let's go ahead and just import it. And there's just a variety of different assets available with Hurricane VR and some examples that I'm gonna show you here next. 
But then we need to also set up the project by going into setup layers, set up physics settings, and also the collision matrix. Then let's go ahead and go into the rendering pipeline. And we're going to go specifically to the material upgrade. And this is going to allow you to convert some of the standard materials to URP since that's the rendering pipeline that I'm using for this project. Then let's go ahead and create a new folder. This one's going to be called third party. The reason that I do this is so that I can keep some of these assets organized. I'm going to move Hurricane VR to the folder. That way we can keep things clean like I always do with other videos. And then if you go on their scenes for Hurricane, you're going to see some of the demos that they provide. I recommend you running some of these demos. You can see here the bow that I'm going to be using for this demo. And then also the arrows. You can also look at the bare bones. This one is really cool because it allows you to check how locomotion works. You can change whether you're sitting, you're standing, and basically some of the parameters that they provide with the rig. You can also see that the rig has these hands, and this is basically hands that are controlled with the controller. And then once you're done looking at that, let's go ahead and drag and drop the tech demo XR rig open XR. And then we can go ahead and remove the backpack. And then we're gonna be adding couple of components to this rig so that it allows you to basically do plane detection. So we're going to be adding the AR playing manager component. So if you add it, it's going to add the XR origin automatically for you. So we're going to have to go back and then change the plane prefab later on. But for now, just go ahead and modify the XR origin. And then I'm going to change the camera offset to be one. Then we also need to associate the camera. So go into the camera scale and then camera and drag it and drop it. All right guys, so for the next part, we also need to go into the camera itself and then we're gonna add the AR camera manager, which is what we did before so that we can get passed through. Then we're gonna go and find the actual background type, just change it to a skybox from a skybox to solid color and change it to black and also alpha equal to zero then if we go under the actual rig we can also add the air session that's going to be required so that we're going to start capturing planes from the scene model that got generated then if we go under the prefabs for hurricane you can add the hvr global drag and drop the archery demo the third party it's going to be useful for a sketch fab component that i'm going to be having in the archery game i'll show you that in a minute for now, let's go ahead and go and download additional sounds that we're going to be using. I'm going to be using Pro Sound Collection, which they provide more than 8,000 different sounds, including music. So it's really helpful and I really enjoy using it. So now let's go ahead and drag and drop our airplane debug visualizer. But before we do that, let me show you here what it has. This is an asset that came from Kenny. And Kenny has this really cool UI pack that I am using. I'm also going to be displaying for each anchor different metadata from the planes, also where it's going to be located, and there's also going to be an X, Y, and Z axis that is going to display for each anchor. And you can also look and see how this is set up in here, but this came from the AR examples and for AR Foundation, and I also made a few tweaks to it. So what I'm gonna do now though, let's go ahead and drag and drop the AR plane debug visualizer. Also gonna go into our Sketchfab component and then drag it and drop it. This is gonna be the target that we're going to be using in our archery game. It also, it happens to be flat, so this is great for basically placing it on the different walls. And I'm going to be basically placing this depending on the walls that get detected. I'll show you how that works, but for now, let's go ahead and disable it. Then let's go into prefab, so we're going to be adding the bow. This is going to be one of the most important parts of this project, specifically because it's going to be the weapon that we're going to be using. But it has basically a collider that designates where the socket is going to start getting detected. The tag socket filter is really important because the socket is only going to allow specific objects with a specific tag. So in this case, large objects are going to be the ones that we want to use for this socket. I also went ahead and modified the grab points because the grab points the Hurricane VR components have, they don't look that well because some of the fingers are going through the meshes and you can go through here and then basically tweak it yourself just like I'm doing right now with the pinky finger. You can basically use the handles and this is very similar to what Interaction SDK provides. I actually found it really easy to use and easier than other components that I used in the past from Meta. So I really like it. So once you tweak it, you can hit save and then make your changes. 
or you can also look at some of the poses in here that they provide. I also have a pose that I already modified as part of the assets in Patreon. So that's the one that I modify and I just basically associate right now. And you can see that this looks a lot better and the fingers are not going through the meshes. Okay, just to give you an overview of what was added, this is gonna be the music that we're gonna be playing in the background. I want it to be more suspense and something that will match the game that we're making. So this came from the Pro Sound Collection that we just imported. Then if we go to the Game Manager though, this one is going to need to have associations to the button. And that's because I'm changing the color of the button and also the text that is displayed for the button. I also have an error audio clip. Just if something happens, something bad happens, then we have this sound that came from the Pro Sound Collection that is going to play and also different game modes so that we can keep track of the game session. And then also you can specify how long that session is going to be for. I set it to 30, that's going to be the default. And then the game UI manager is going to do exactly what it says. I have different bindings in here to UI, the elapsed time, a score, best score, etc. And then just go ahead and associate the bound that I have in here with the different fields. And then I also have bindings for the actual UI, like I tell, like I told you, but I also have some bindings for the controllers. For instance, the menu button on the controller is going to cast the walls, basically the target to be placed at different locations at different walls. And then the toggle for the logger and also a toggle for the visualizers is going to do as it says that it's going to do. And then for the error spawner, I'm going to basically spawn this object that you see right here, which is going to be the arrow. This one happened to have a socket already as part of the Hurricane VR. And then it's gonna be tagged to a small item. That way we can only place the arrows on the socket. And then that's basically all of those components. So if you go back to the error spawner, this is gonna be using kind of like a pulling system. I'm gonna set these to an initial value so that we can get these many arrows. And then the active objects per cycle, that's going to be how many objects we are cycling through the pulling system. And then also some initial positions for the arrows. So the next thing that I need to do though, let's go ahead and associate the plane manager with the plane manager on the fine wall for target. And then I also need to associate the camera. You can see here that we have planes, we also have anchors, we also have the ability to grab the bow, also to throw it, to place it on the sockets. I can also grab the arrows and then place it back and everything is working really well. I can place the bow on the arrow sockets because of what we designated for those. And then you can also use the menu button on the controller to basically change the location of the target. And then you can see the physics interactions are working. I can go through the wall and you can see I can place it and I think that is a good location. Then you can grab the bow and then the arrow. Let's try and shooting and see what happens. And looks like I'm doing good. I don't have the score system just yet, but that's going to be something that we're going to be adding later on today. And then I can also, you know, toggle the visualization of the planes. I can grab and throw things and things are going to be basically reacting to the physical world because we have plane detection enabled. I can also shoot different objects around my environment and things are colliding correctly. I can. <laughs> I can also try to go through and see if I can go through the couch. And you can see that the hands cannot go through objects. And that's because of the physical aspect of Hurricane VR, which is really cool and a feature that many of you have been asking for. I'm going to be downloading Odin Inspector and Serializer. And this is an asset that I recommend year over year. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I really like it and I've used it quite a bit. Specifically for this video, I did a lot of prototyping and testing. So, just go ahead and import it into your solution. All right, so let's look at the results of what we just did. We have the session information, which we can now see it's all grouped in one area. We can also look at the session data, and then that is something that is cool because they behind the scene create an object that we can use to basically visualize 
what's part of that class. You can also look at how we can basically span some of these panels. This is something that wasn't part of Unity by default and Odin is adding. There's also this method in here that we can execute through the inspector. So you can see here in this example that I am incrementing the score by 100. I can click on invoke. And right now we're not displaying it yet, but we're gonna look at how we can change that because the code is looking for a specific game session, basically a game mode. So if I were to change the game mode here to target place, you're gonna see that right now we have we have a change, but we cannot see it until we change it to session started. So we were able to basically execute those methods and the results of those methods are now visible. So now if we go and look at the find wall for target, I added this field as a required field and I also added it to basically to preview the actual icon. So I added an attribute for that and you can see that it displays that. There's also a lot of different tools and options available in Odin. Obviously I didn't cover everything, but I recommend you to check it out. Okay, so the next one that I wanted to show you is how we can integrate the Do Twin Pro to this game. I want to animate the UI panel that we have, basically have it bounce and fall when somebody presses the start button. So we're gonna be importing Do Twin Pro and then basically using some of the UI pieces that they provide, such as the do twin animation component, to be able to tweak these through the inspector without having to write any code. So if you look at it, we can change here the behavior. We can say that this is gonna be move. I'm also going to be changing the duration and also some of the easing you can also change depending on how you want the animation. Let's go ahead and test out the outbounds and then you can also change the where it's going to go as a as a destination. So in my case, I set it to two and one for Y and Z. And we can also hit the play button here to see how it's going to look. So once you click it and then, you know, you can visualize it. So that's really cool because we don't have to write or use any animations to do that. We just use their system to be able to create a very simple animation. I can also, you know, hit play, change some of the parameters. So if you want it to be really slow, you can change it to a four and you can see how that's going to slowly twin to that value. Okay, so next we're going to be integrating Easy Safe, and this is a really cool asset. I, like I said at the beginning, I could have implemented something like this to serialize the data to a file and then Basically having to deal with the file system on multiple platforms can be very tedious and causes a lot of headaches. So easy safe, it's really cool and I think it's really powerful based on what I, you know, what I did in the last two weeks. You can basically open the auto save options and you can enable it for the scene and it's gonna handle all the saving for you. You can also tell the system what you want to save and when to save it in the save event. It's gonna happen when I quit the application also when to load it, which in this case is gonna load whatever I tell it to save on a start. And then you can also look at the keys, what locations we can use, the path, the file extension, and then there's also encryption that you can do. So if you search for a game manager or the manager that you have or the object that you have, you can also designate if you want to save that or not. If you go to settings, you can also tell the system what you want to save about it. In my case, I'm gonna save the session time, the start button, the gameplay mode, and also the session data, which is really important for a game. So once you're ready to go, you can hit the open persistent data. And right now we have a folder, but we don't have any files in it because we haven't really run the games. And if you go into that directory, now we're gonna have a file, right? And that matches what we set in the parameters. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up with Visual Studio Code. And you're gonna see that it looks like a JSON file and it is a JSON file with some of the data that we're telling the system that we wanted to save. All right, so once you're ready to test it, in this case, I'm playing the game, so I'm gonna go ahead and increase the score and you can see that the best score has been saved and the time was set to 30 seconds. Let's go ahead and hit play so that we can run the game one more time. And you can see that now the best score got saved and now so, that time got saved. So that's working and it was really easy to implement. So let's go ahead and look at the file in the file system. And you're gonna see that now we have the thousand and the 30 for the best session time. All right, so the next asset is going to be mesh effects. And I wanted the game to have a really cool look and some particle effects. So this is really cool because we're gonna be able to use them to basically have the bow look a little bit better and more, and I think cooler. And also the arrow, it's gonna have kind of a fire type effect. 
So once you import it, it's also going to have an HDRP and URP patch. So let's make sure that you run this and it's going to basically fix some of the materials so that they are compatible with URP. Then once you're ready to go, you can go to your object, in my case, the bow, and I'm gonna be dragging and dropping the effect. You can see some of the components that they have. They have a light, a mesh effect, a trail, and also some settings. All you really need to do is go into the actual effect that you want to apply this to, and then just grab the parent, and then once you're ready to go, you can also change the scale multiplier, and then hit update so that it basically attaches and sets everything up to the mesh. You can play the game and you can see now that I have this really cool fire effect on the bow and then also on the arrows. You can see they have some type of fire. I could have improved this and maybe have the fire come up whenever I, you know, I wanted to do that. Maybe when I launch it and it hits the target, that's when the fire comes up. So you can control that through scripting. But in this case, I just wanted to test it and see how it look. I can also throw the bow and then get it back by just opening my hand and looking at it. Well, that is how easy it is to create a mixed reality game by using Unity assets. I'll be including all the assets used today and other I recommend in the video description in case you are considering any of them. Also, if you enjoy watching this video, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. And as always, huge thanks to my patrons for supporting my work and also to everybody else for watching. Happy XR coding, everyone.